So imagine you having viral reels like the ones that I had. Well, how good that could be. And it is possible because making reels is not that difficult, but you need to make sure to follow these steps in order to record, edit, and upload high quality reels. Uploading reels with low or high quality can make or break the views of your video. And let me tell you that if you upload a low quality or a video that is not the best quality, then Instagram won't promote it. TikTok won't promote it. This is because they run all the videos that are uploaded through some softwares and they are able to detect whether that one is shot and has high quality or if it has low quality. Now there are a few things that people actually don't understand and these are that whenever you shoot a reel and you want to upload on Instagram, the biggest part is done in pre-production because I'm going to show you a few ways on how you can export your videos but the problem is that if the quality of those videos are actually terrible before even exporting them because of the situation and how you shot them then there's no way that you can upload you can transform your videos from low quality to high quality. And the first thing that we're going to mention in this video is actually shooting with loads of light. This is because especially if you shoot reels or TikToks just using your smartphone, if you are in low light situation, your smartphone will perform terrible because they don't have a big sensor. They're simply not designed to perform well in low light situation. No matter if you have the latest iPhone, if you have the latest Android, whatever that is, if you are in a low light situation, it's going to perform worse. What does it mean this for you? Well, you need to try either to shoot in outside when there is a lot of light, not in harsh light though. So try to stay in the shadow or with, if you are inside, try to have as much light as possible, bring in extra lights, turn on all the lights that you have in your house and try to have also some extra lights, whether it's a tube like the one that is just behind uh, that plant, whether it's an artificial light like this one, try to have as much light as so that your phone will perform the best. This concept, and you might know already, works also for photos and even more for videos. So right now, for example, I'm shooting there where it's very dark because the light is just right here. Now see what happens when I actually switch the light from here to there. There you go then the quality becomes already much better than before. And you can now see on the screen, the two videos that there is a massive difference from when there is light and when there is no light. So super important, try to have as much light as possible whenever you're recording your reels. Then the next thing that you wanna do is actually shooting in 24 or 30p. 30p is even better. So whenever you're shooting in 60 FPS or 120, there is the triangle of exposure that is automatically adjusted by the phone itself and by definition of this, whenever we are shooting in slow motion, the shutter speed will increase. That means there's gonna be less light within the camera and therefore the ISO will be pushed up. That means there's gonna be more grain. Now, if you're a beginner and if you don't know about shutter speed, aperture and ISO, you don't have to worry about what I just said. Just keep in mind that you wanna shoot in 30p, not 60 FPS, not 120, not 240, unless you have a lot of light available to you. So that's depending on the situation, but in general, if you wanna keep it high quality, keep it at 30p unless you need you require some slow motion for your videos and you are in a very very bright area the next super important thing that you want to take care of when you're shooting your reels is actually not zooming in by pinching with your fingers on the screen this is because you're going to introduce some digital zoom that will destroy basically the reels and the quality will just decrease what instead you can do is using the one pair two pair or 0.5 pair that you have already native in your phone. For example, if I'm not mistaken, the iPhone 13 Pro allows to go three pair instead of two pair, and that's already a zoom that is native from the phone and therefore it doesn't lose quality. Otherwise, try to stay at one pair all the time or maximum two pair from your phone and do not pinch in, but rather maybe use an external app to zoom in afterwards. And also one more thing, obviously depends on the model of the phone that you have. Usually super wide angle cameras perform worse. That means that whenever you clicking that 0.5 pair on your phone, usually the camera decreases a little bit of the quality. I now use an iPhone 11 Pro Max, which is not the latest model, it's more than two years old, but I still use it for all my reels and I always shoot in one pair because the 0.5 camera is actually not that great unless even in this case you are in a super, super bright area. But in general, try to stay one pair if you want to achieve the maximum quality out of your phone. Then the next tip, which is actually very 
close to the one is that you don't want to zoom in too much in post as well. If you're shooting in 4K, then maybe you can zoom in a little bit in post-production, but don't do it too much. Otherwise, you're gonna destroy the clip and your reel will decrease quality. So in this case, I use Splice all the time for editing all my reels. It's a free app that you'll be able to download uh, using the link in my bio. If you are an iOS user, you'll be able also to have a 30% off in case you wanna go premium with that link. The coolest part about Splice is that it allows you to have this uh, animate effect that I'm clicking right now. In this case, you'll be able to choose the start frame and the end frame. So starting from a start frame, you choose from where the clip should start from its dimension, and then it's gonna move gradually towards the end frame. So you decide the start and the end, and then the app will automatically adjust throughout the whole clip. And in this case, what you want to avoid is that you don't want to zoom in too much in the end frame. So whenever I'm here, everything that you want to do is maybe zoom in a little so that you have this beautiful zoom in effect, but you don't want to go crazy. You don't want to go like that, otherwise all the grain will pop up. And as you can see now that I zoomed in too much, you can see that the reel has become like a crazy low quality, but that's totally normal. When you zoom in, you're gonna expose the pixels more, you're gonna expose the grain and therefore you're gonna lose quality. So don't zoom in too much, but try to get the right framing directly during the production of your reels. All right, and then still using Splice, what you wanna do is that you wanna export your videos in 4K. So whenever you finish, you've done to edit all your clips, then you wanna go into share. And then in this case, you'll be able to choose the resolution and also the frame per second. What I usually do is that I export in 30 FPS. You don't want to go 25, you don't wanna go 60, 30 is kind of the smoothest and probably the format that uh, Instagram prefers. And then you wanna go ultra, so 4K. It's really important that you export in 4K because Instagram will perform on its own a compression. And therefore, when you have a bigger file and it's compressed, it's better than having a smaller file and then have it compressed as well. Then the next thing that I've already said in my previous video about how to upload high quality photos, and I'm gonna leave down below a link to the video and also somewhere up here, is that you wanna enable high quality uploads on Instagram. So in this case, you wanna go into the menu and then you wanna go into settings then you wanna go into account and data usage. Here you'll be able to enable or disable high quality uploads. Obviously you want to enable that all the time because there's no point having it disabled. Then one more thing that you wanna take care of is that whenever you're actually exporting a video from Splice or from your computer, wherever you're editing your videos, then you don't want to import it again in another app, in another maybe software for editing because this will destroy the quality. If you can, try to export it once and that's it. Don't maybe export it and then import it again in a different app and then export it again and then import it again in another different one. If you can, just use one app and again, Splice does everything that I need so I use that one for everything that I want and then I just export it once and then from when you export it then you go directly on Instagram and you do nothing else but that and then there is another thing that is super important as well that I see quite often but you really don't want to do this is that whenever you post it on TikTok do not download from TikTok and then upload it on Instagram or YouTube shorts but try to have an external app like Splice to then export the video and then that video will be uploaded on TikTok Instagram and YouTube shorts this is because you export it only once. Consider that whenever you actually download the video from TikTok, this will be already compressed. And if you notice also the size is very, very small because otherwise they will have to have huge, 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 huge data drives and all sort of storage. And obviously they compress the files. Everyone compresses the files, YouTube compresses, TikTok, Instagram. So at the beginning, I used to add the text directly within the apps, but then lately I decided to just add the text directly in Splice and then uh, export a final video so that I just need to add the music within the app and I lose much, much less time rather than having to add all the text in all the different apps. I went viral anyway, even if I added text just using Splice without doing it in the app. Even though there was a voice that was saying that if you use the text directly uh, within the apps then you would have a higher reach. Now if you want to learn how to make viral videos and TikTok for photographers check out my course on Skillshare. You can watch it completely for free for 30 days upon signing up using the link that I'm gonna leave down in the description. And again if you want to know how to upload high quality photos then you should watch this video. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to leave it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Ciao!